What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how I modeled the spaghetti junction in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so make sure you stick around through this whole video because I talk about a ton of different applications for SketchUp extensions. I think even if you don't model something like this, you are going to learn something new. And so this is a model I created for a presentation I did with Dave Cooperstein at last week's 3D base camp. Basically the challenge was we selected multiple different models and we each modeled them and then presented on the way that we created them um, using whatever extensions we wanted to. And so the idea behind the presentation was we would likely get to the same result in different ways. So it was a very interesting presentation, but this was a fun model that I wanted to talk about how I created. Okay, and so first thing, my goal was not to create like a buildable highway model. Um, that would take lots and lots and lots of hours. And so what I had to do instead was figure out a way to kind of approximate the way that this model looked in 3D. And so the very first thing I did is I brought in model data using placemaker and in this case i use the higher resolution near map data which gives me a higher resolution image that i could use in order to work off of next what i did in the model is i used an extension which everyone should have called fredo spline and so by the way i will link to all of these in the notes down below but the first thing i did is i used the extension fredo spline in order to trace all of the curves on the surface. Fredo sp Spline is extremely powerful because it allows you to use control points in order to create curves. So I trace the outside of all of the different curves using Fredo Spline. One of the powerful things about Fredo Spline is you can go through and you can adjust the curves by changing these. So it's kind of a non-destructive curve editor. And so once I traced all of these in 2D, and note that I created these as groups so that they were separate, like this, right? That way, when I created surfaces, I didn't have edges splitting with other edges or anything like that. I could just pick the individual parts and pieces. So I broke this up in a way where these each had their own meshes. And so now what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a three-dimensional surface. But the problem with this is right now if I trace over top of this and create a surface, there's no supporting geometry in here, meaning if I try to make a change like this, it's not going to do what I want it to do. And so one of the problems I ran into is in order to do this, I needed supporting geometry inside of the surface. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to use an extension for this. And so in this case, I use an extension called Curveloft. And so Curveloft has a function that'll create surfaces inside of a model like this one, just like this. And so what that does is that allows me to create a surface that has supporting geometry. And so one thing I ran into though before I did this is I needed to make sure that each one of the edges had the same number of segments. So in order to have the same number of segments, what you can do is you can use Fredo Spline and you can change the curve to a polyline divider. So what a polyline divider does, actually it's a polyline segmenter. And so a polyline segmenter is gonna give you the ability, so a polyline segmenter is gonna give you the ability to take an edge and split it into a set number of segments. So in this case, I'm gonna split each one of these up into 64 segments. And so when you do that, so swap curve to polyline segmenter, we wanna change this to 64, hit the enter key. Now, because these have the same number of segments, you're gonna get a very uniform mesh in here when it creates this surface like this. So then I can take the enter key and create this surface. Now. I'm gonna take this surface, right click on it and reverse the faces. So what that gives me is that gives me a surface that has a bunch of supporting geometry. Well, now that I have supporting geometry, I can use a tool that allows you to edit things with fall off called vertex tools. And so vertex tools is like an improved version of sandbox tools. What it does is it allows you to select vertices so in this case, for example, I could select a series of vertices right here and set a fall off. So in this case, I might set a fall off of like 375 feet or something like that, or maybe even 400 feet or more. And so what that does is that allows me to move the middle 
of this up while having kind of a gentle fall off around the outside. So in this situation, I went ahead and I set a height between levels, which I believe was something like 25 feet. So in this case, because this is gonna be two levels high, I moved this up 50 feet. Now, one thing to note about this is this is one way to create this three-dimensional surface. Another way that you might try is you might try using the loft along path function in curve aloft with a profile in order to create this as well. But this is what I ended up with it with, with the amount of time that I had. And so the next step was going through and doing this with all of the surfaces, either moving them up or moving them down like this. So I just went segment by segment and piece by piece. And when I was done, my faces looked something like this right here. Now, when I did this, there were some areas that needed patching in because they weren't necessarily ideal from a shaping standpoint. And Curve Aloft was not the right tool for that. What I used instead is a tool called Soap Skin and Bubble in order to patch those in. So Soap Skin and Bubble is a super powerful tool for creating skins across closed surfaces. And one other thing is there's also a tool that you can find either within the free extension Sketch UV or inside of Profile Builder called the Smart Path Selection Tool. This tool was very valuable for picking up these long paths because it allows you to select a path like this and it's going to automatically do kind of a smart selection in here so I can use it to pick up all of these different edges without having to go into a top-down view or anything like that. And so I can click and hit the enter key to finalize my selection, but then, and it looks like I might have missed an edge, nope, I'm good. I could use soap skin and bubble in order to generate a soap skin. And I'm gonna type in a new division, so maybe like 20 feet or something like that. I wish you could move this around in here, but you can't. Um, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a surface like this one. Now, obviously the topology is not fantastic on this, but to me, this exercise wasn't really um, in order to create super high quality topology as much as to get to a final result. But then you could use the soften edges function over here in the outliner or in the uh, over here in your windows on the right hand side of the page in order to soften all of those edges. Now, one of the things that was actually more challenging than I expected was adding all of the supports in here because a highway like this actually has a ton of supports. And so what I ended up doing with all of the supports is I created a dynamic support with dynamic components that would automatically split a length like this into one, two, three, four supports down below. And the nice thing about this is I could take this and I could copy it along a path and then I could just scale it to the length that I wanted. Notice how when I do that, this is actually splitting this distance in here without distorting those columns. So what that did is that allowed me to really quickly create those. And then I was able to use the path copy functionality inside of Sketch Plus in order to create this along a path. And so in this particular situation, what I would do is I would select this path right here and within Sketch Plus, and you could also use Chris Fulmer's um, path copy as well. Sketch Plus just works a little bit more live. And so Sketch Plus has a path copy function so you can select the path. And so I could use Sketch Plus to set a start point of a path and then click on an object and I could use it in order to copy this object by a certain length. So in this case, for example, I might say that my spacing on this one is gonna be 275 feet and I could hit the enter key. Well then, all I had to do was take these, make sure that they were aligned, which was a bunch of manual work but it wasn't terrible because I had these dynamic components. Then I could take the dynamic component and I could size it so that it aligned with this surface. So I went through and I added all of these different uh, highway supports just kind of manually like this. Now, I don't know, I don't know that there's an automated way that you could just bring these in here, but I just ended up doing this manually. And so once I did that, 
I had all of these columns inside of my model. And so the next step with this highway model is I took all of these, and again, this is where it's nice that I was just kind of approximating. I had a ground model right here like this, but because these were all copies of that same dynamic component, I could take the supports and I could just move them all down until they went through the bottom of my surface. Because no one's gonna see on the back side of my surface, it didn't really matter. If these were um, not level or anything like that. I just needed them to touch the ground. Now, obviously you could come in here and model each one of those individually and do a lot more with that. But for my purposes here, this worked just fine because it gave the visual of a ton of supports in here. And so the next step was to thicken the roads right? Because right now these are just kind of a singular plane in here. Well, what I had done is I had come in here and I had it kind of exploded this so that these were all um, individual surface or so these were all kind of um, merged together as surfaces. Well, then I could take all of these and I could use an extension from Fredo 6 um, that thickens faces called joint push pull. And so you can use joint push pull in order to add thickness to these surfaces. So in this case, I wanted this to be fairly thick, so maybe like three feet. And so when I extrude this up, this is gonna go through and it's gonna generate faces right here. Now there are some things I probably need to fix with my geometry before I do this, right? There's a couple gaps in here and things like that. You could heal those manually, or you could generate this just by extruding this upward like this. And so if you do get little gaps like this one, you can just come in here and, and uh, and solve them manually. And then you can use the erase tool and hold the shift key in order to hide this geometry. Or you could also uh, hold the control key in order to change this to soften smooth geometry so that it matches. So you might have a few areas where you have to kind of like solve some problems like this, but overall it's not really that bad healing all of these edges considering the complexity of the face that we just created. And so then I needed to pick up the edges and use a tool in order to create a profile in here. So this is actually pretty easy because you can double click and then do a shift click in order to deselect the face and any additional edges that you have in here, right? So you do wanna be a little bit careful with your selection, but you can pick up these edges and then you can use Profile Builder in order to create highway dividers along that path. And so what I did is I created a profile in here that was shaped like a highway divider. So I'm just going to activate Profile Builder right here, which I saw a lot of uses of, by the way, at Basecamp. But then I created a profile, which is very easy. You can just select a surface. And we'll just call this divider right here. You can set the insertion point on the profile to the base right? So in this case, it's going to be the lower left-hand corner. So we're going to go with bottom left right here, but then you can select the edges and you can do an extrusion along paths and you need to be inside of the group so you can pick all these up, but you can use this in order to quickly extrude these highway dividers along the path. Now, the cool thing about doing this with Profile Builder is if I ever wanted to swap these out, I could just by selecting this and picking a new profile. So like, for example, if I wanted to use the Profile Builder's Jersey Barrier, I could just edit the attribute right here. So I need to click into this group, but I could pick these up and I could adjust them and I could apply the new profile to it like this. So watch, it's gonna swap this out with this new profile over the old profiles. All right, so if we take a look at this, you can see how this swapped out that other profile with this profile right here. And I should have used a different insertion point, but it should give you an idea of what you can do. Um, really anymore, anything that has a profile like this, I use Profile Builder instead of Follow Me because it gives me the ability to adjust retroactively. And so when this is all done, it's going to look something like this in your model. So we're going to hide the hidden geometry. So now we've got a thickened highway. We've got highway supports in here like this. And then the last thing I did is I wanted to scatter some two dimensional objects in here using the extension scatter for SketchUp. And so what scatter did is it gave me the ability to select a surface like this one, 
we're going to go to our options right here and we're going to reduce the number of objects in here by like a lot because this is way too many. Um, so we'll say zero two or something like that. And then what we can do is we can set a mask. And so what a mask is going to do is it's going to allow us to paint on the surface. So notice I can make this brush size bigger, but I can paint a mask on a surface to tell it, I want you to place objects only where I paint like this. So now I've got a mask in here and I can select the objects that I want. So in this case, I've got these 2D face me components in here, and I can pick multiple different face me components, and then I can adjust things about them. So like, for example, this is gonna create a lot, so I might bring that down even more, but notice how it's going to scatter those objects inside of my model. Now, you can create those either as proxies like this or as actual model geometry. Since these are two dimensional face me components, um, I was able to really quickly generate these. And then I also brought in building context around my highway using placemaker like this. All of that gave me a final result that looks something like this. And so I was able to add shadows in here and get kind of a nice angle, but I'm very happy with how this turned out. Though I'm not as happy with the amount of time I had to spend in order to create this. All right, so that's kind of a high level overview of how I created this model. I'd love to hear from you if you have any ideas, if you like this kind of video, I just love having that conversation with you guys. Big thanks to Dave for his idea for this uh, presentation at Basecamp. I really enjoyed presenting with him. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.